Thank you, Robert and Bert and the Lotus Club for inviting me. I'm truly honored to be here to talk about my two films with Ginsburg. I brought two props. This is the first one. This is the second one. <laughs> and they sort of lead into each other. I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to sort of hit the bullet points of, of each film. Um, Boys in Blue and Gray, uh, this film, I produced for PBS. And it aired, well, it first came out in September of 2002. And it aired uh, in many markets with Ken Burns and Master of Civil War when that came out on DVD. And it also aired this summer uh, nationwide on a bigger broadcast to uh, all the affiliates. And it's won numerous awards, which I'm humbled and very proud to, uh, to have. What I think what sets this apart is I set out to do the Battle of Gettysburg from a soldier's perspective and from a uh, sort of a soldier's eyewitness view. And what I did was I integrated first person battle reports and diaries along with 10 separate reenactments. I filmed all over the East Coast um, trying to match the terrain of Gettysburg, like the Lee Field and Pickett's Charge and Culp's Hill, the different reenactments I was filming at. So it really gives you the feeling that it is the Battle of Gettysburg. Little Round Top, it was playing out in, outside for a little bit on a loop. Little Round Top was actually filmed up in the Cascals. And, um, <coughs> We matched the terrain of Little Round Top, and we actually matched the angle of the sun coming down at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We were, at, we were filming at 11 o'clock in the morning, so it was actually the opposite angle. But we really got the, the terrain right and the uh, angle of the sun. So it really sort of brings you close to the battle. And um, it, was, uh, it was fun out there for me filming, because I did most of these most of the filming myself, I did it in uniform with the camera. And as some of the literary historians will tell you, that you know the uniforms are not <laughs> made for summer weather. <laughs> they're wool, and when it's 90 degrees out, they're running with the camera. You get very sweaty and hot and tired. Uh, but for me to be out filming in the battle, it gave me a sense of you know just a glimpse of what it was like for the soldiers out there in the battle, because you, you're running, you're hearing shots, and all you see is white smoke. You can't see anything in front of you. You probably see someone beside you, but if you get hit or, or shot, you're never going to know where it came from, what happened. It's totally confusing. And I did that so I, I sort of got a sense of what it was like to be out in the middle of the battle. Uh, what makes the film unique I think is it's told, as I mentioned, from the soldier's perspective. But I wanted it to be a film that really captures history. So instead of using, instead of writing a narration, I took what is the most famous letter of Gettysburg. It's called the Frank Haskell Letter of Gettysburg. And it's actually on book form. I'm sure that you may have seen it in the store. It was a 175 paragraph, 50 page letter it was written by uh, Frank Haskell to his brother in Wisconsin two weeks after that. And I got permission to adapt um, the letter. I didn't use all of it, obviously, but I used the portions of it that sort of un unveiled the story of the battle. And it really is unique because you're hearing the battle told from a perspective that's only two weeks old. And it brings you very close to the battle. And I was delighted that they allowed me to use it. And I thought it was a great way to tell the battle and bring the history really close. Because you're hearing what I told the actor. I said, I, want, I don't want this to be a dry narration. I want, I want to hear the anger. I want to hear the elation. I want to hear you know, your thoughts. And what we did was we, we read the narration. It was with a Broadway actor. The name is James Dogface. And what I did was at the end of, of this film, of Boys of Blue and Gray, I said, I, you know, I, I've had the audience listen to this narration for 90 minutes. And this was a real person. I've got to let them know what happened to the soldier. 
So at the very close of the film, before the epilogue, um, he signs off Frank Artemis Haskell. And you see a still of what happens if he was killed less than a year later at the Battle of Cold Harbor. And I've watched people when they watch the film, and, and I always get this, you know, I'm sort of watching through the action, and people go, oh, that's too bad. Because they, they sort of made the connection. You know, they've been listening to this guy on his phone. And he died 140 years ago. So that's, you know, that's the connection I was looking for with this film. To really bring it, you know, bring it out. That these were real people, and they lived and died, and, you know, for, for our country. So, and I was very pleased to do it. It was, it's, um, it's a big sell for PBS, and I'm honored to have done it. And that segues me into the second film I did, which is uh, Three Days of Destiny. <clears throat> the Gettysburg Anniversary Committee that runs the massive reenactment of Gettysburg um, saw my film on PBS. Or I, I talked to them about doing some filming. And they asked me to come in and uh, give a pitch to do the 140 of Gettysburg. This was two years before last year, which was the 140. And I came in and I said, they had done reenactment videos, which is, which were sort of like, here's the reenactors arriving in the parking lot and they're walking away from their cars, and it was sort of a documented weekend. It was really, wasn't really compelling. And I said, if they really want to reach a mass audience. I said, if you want to reach a mass audience, you've got to tell a story. And I wrote a synopsis in a script and I pitched it to them. And I, I wasn't the only one that contacted them. But I was really, I think I really convinced them that I loved the history. I loved the battle. And I really thought that, you know, I could give it what it deserved. And uh, they, they picked me over some other people that you know, had bigger credits. But um, I was really proud to do it. 